what is going on, I've decided to make another revision. So these are actually the same smooth buckets, if you've seen the other video, same hub and everything under there, but I printed a new housing and a new top plate. As you can see, I happen to have a second one of these motors laying around, and while it, one is labeled as a 250 and one's a 3, you can see they are identical motors on every single spectrum on output they put out the same they have the same output amperage voltage everything so on this one it now features a nozzle here and a second one here instead of cutting these out after i cut them out in the beginning so now it has two motors and it's staged like that same same ratio in each motor and at first i'm gonna just test one motor to make sure i'm gonna test the voltage it should hopefully it'll still have the same 12 volt output I'll test the second one, so hopefully it'll have the same 12 volt output, and then I'll wire them in parallel, this way so it'll be red to red, black to black. This way it will keep the voltage the same, but will double the amperage. And then we're gonna hook up the same volt, the same resistive heaters that we use in all the other videos, and we'll hopefully get a little output test. And it'll be the same hose, same water, and hopefully the same pressure. I am gonna get a pressure tester so we can actually verify that the pressure is the same, and I'll do a flow test by just putting the hose in a gallon or a bucket and fill it up and we'll time it to see. So, and the one thing I will say is it might need a little bit more adjustment in terms of the height of the Pelton turbine or the Pelton wheel and buckets. Just with the alignment on it, but you can see the gloss really makes the water just slip right off. It makes this a lot more efficient. As you can, I just turned it on on the one. I didn't do any power testing. I just want to make sure it's spin before I started filming this video, but everything seems to work. I put another bearing holder in there, and again, a bearing bearing down there. So it has two bearings to hold the shaft straight, and this one seems to be pretty sturdy, and then it has screws all the way around. So let's do a little test, verify the voltage out of each motor, then we'll put them together, put them on. I do actually have two more of those resistive heaters, so we'll see, but in my head, I'm assuming that the water is the limitation of the power at this test if i had get more pressure i think with the one motor i could have made more power but i had a second motor laying around and i wanted to just make a video and see and then also what i'm going to do is with the same hose i'm going to do a splitter and do a separate video where i do the dual feed it won't be any more water just because it's the same hose but this way it's more evenly distributed maybe i'll try it with both motors i'll take one off and try it with one and we'll just do a different test but for this one i'm just going to do a test and see what we can get with two motors on the same setup we were using before. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have no load. I'm going to turn it on, fire it up, and then I'll connect the voltage or the uh, multimeter, the tester, to each one, and I'll see. So let's fire it up. All right, it might be a little bit hard to tell, but in this first video, I actually sped it up times two just to save some time in this video. Right here I'm connecting the back motor just so I can get that initial voltage reading. And as you can see the front motor wires are still on the ground and I'm just gonna go ahead and skip to here so you don't have to watch me try and get it in focus. All right, now that the camera is focused, you can see there's a 2.3 or 2.4 watt draw on the motor and that shouldn't be happening because there's actually currently no load on it. So I, I think there's a flaw with the motor, some resistance on the inside or a flaw in the system. So I need to address that, but the motor is making about 19 volts of power, as you can see here. And now with the resistive heater connected, it's making about 25 watts of power and at about 12 volts. And that's actually a decrease in, from the last video, and that's likely due to the second motor being on here. And even while there's not a load actively on the second motor, there still is that free weight spinning torque. Like it, it takes a certain amount of torque to spin the motor over even without a load. This load just increases with the resistance on the motor. But as you can see here, it is now, this is testing the front motor on it to see the, verify the voltage. And you can see it has the same 20 volts, which is about a little bit higher than the other one at 19. And it has the same 2.6, 2.5 watts of power. And if you notice, that's actually less than the last test videos if you've stayed up to date with them. And I think this is likely due to that increased motor resistance that I've talked about with adding another one. So as you can see here, there's still 2.5, 2.7 there watts of power draw and that there was no load and that's what I was showing with the green 
the green wire lead right there. And now it's it's on the ground, but it's actually not connected to those two resistive heaters. And don't worry, the, that's the one waterproof thing of this unit. So this is just now connecting the two motors together just to verify that they can work together in parallel. There's no reason that they shouldn't be able to with the same output. And also, if you notice right there, the shaft is actually wobbling, but not nearly as bad as it was in the other test video. And I have gotten these shafts and had them be just bent from the way. If you roll them on the floor, they're not perfectly straight. So making something to hold them this straight, I'm pretty proud of. And as you can see here, I'm kind of messing with the motor. And that has to do with the belt tension. I've been having issues with this one motor with it. So I either got to crank it down or just throw like a lock nut on there. Just something so I can get a little more clamping power against that plastic. But I also don't want to crack it. So, And... With my feet getting soaked, I am showing you guys now this power output. And as you can see, it has this 9 volts of 27-ish, 20, almost 28 watts of power. And now I reach over and start playing with the nozzle a little bit just to see what I can get on power output. And 29, I think 0.5 was the highest I saw, 29s. So this is still much lower than the last test video. Oh, right what I was worried about happened. It cracked right here while well, trying to get the hose out. So I'll see what I can do, but I might have to print a new housing and make this wall thicker. Damn it. Now with both motors hooked up, it's only making 17 volts of power. And this could be because um, the one nozzle isn't as efficient or well created as the other one. But now listen to the sound difference. You can actually hear the rotation speed slow down slow down on the unit when I open the second valve and this further backs up the point of what I said of this unit needs more water flow and less that or less nozzles. Nozzles aren't the issue. I actually think on the next one I'm going to close the area on the nozzle to try and get the velocity up coming out of the nozzle because I think this will turn around and make more power. As you can see here, I'm also fiddling with trying to get the second nozzle into the side of the housing. This housing was printed in ASA, which does not have as strong of layer adhesion as a PETG or a similar PLA. So this is something I'm going to keep in mind when printing the next one. I think I'm going to opt for PETG just because of its layer adhesion qualities and it should also have no problem handling the heat. So I want to hook, once if you saw there, it was at 9 volts of when it's no load and as soon as I connect the load it slows down too much to see this unit right here this power analyzer needs about I think it's about six volts to illuminate the screen so when both nozzles are open it just doesn't have enough so I think what I'm going to do in the next videos like I said is focus on the one nozzle one motor and get that power output done and then in the future I'm going to come back when I have enough water and flow and worry about adding a second motor, a second nozzle, or what it may be in the future. So if you guys like this video, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what the future revisions you want to see, future projects. There are a couple, and I do apologize. It has been a little bit since I've posted. Life just happens. I've been a little busy, but don't worry, guys. I'm back, and I'm not going anywhere. See you in the next one.